What is up, everybody, and welcome to the Casual Wrestling Daily Podcast. I am your host, the Notorious Nerdy D, and tonight I'm about to break down pro wrestling for all the true casual fans. So whether you are listening on podcast networks or watching on YouTube, make sure to like and leave a comment on today's episode. A little bit of housekeeping, the show will be changing its posting schedule for the time being uh, as I try to kind of finalize the content strategy for the channel, but for the future episodes, they will be posting nightly around 11 p.m. Central United States time. That way, uh, they can be listened to the next morning and I get all the news from the previous day recorded that night. It also makes it easier to uh, record after Raw and SmackDown, so just look out. New episodes will post 11 p.m. Uh, 11 to 12, I haven't come up exactly with the time, but they'll post on, on the night, uh, on a night schedule and be ready for you to listen to uh, in the morning. With that being said, let's jump right into today's show. Uh, it, so it was announced earlier today that, that Stephanie McMahon has stepped down and resigned as CEO of the WWE. And right now, currently, as I speak, there is a complete shit show going on on Twitter right now because the rumor is that Saudi Arabia... The, the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund has entered into an agreement with the WWE to purchase it and take the company back to being private. Now, this, I mean, this is insane. This is this is possibly this could go down tonight as the biggest news story in professional wrestling history. And I think, you know, I wanted to do in my own way a little kind of a deeper dive into what I think this means for the future of the WWE. First off, I think. We have to kind of look at why did Stephanie McMahon resign from the company? Was that always the original plan? Because if you think back to right before Vince McMahon was let go from the WWE or, or stepped down from the WWE, the original plan was always for Stephanie to take a leave of absence and go do something else for a little bit. But then, but then all of the, uh, the Vince McMahon news came out and she stepped up and had the opportunity to take over the WWE and become the CEO. And, and she, she grabbed that opportunity. But now that Vince has for, forced himself back in, uh, she stepped away and resigned from the company. You, you have to look deeper into what that means. Is this, is this her being upset because Vince McMahon is hostily taking back over uh, the WWE? Is you know we we haven't had any news on Triple H yet. There's been rumors running around on Triple H possibly stepping down. I've seen rumors on Triple H staying with the company. All all of this is all up in the air right now. But the the the, the only thing that we can hang our hats on is there was a meeting last Friday. There was a meeting that was reported on last Friday that said nothing was going to change. The talent. The management, they were all assured that nothing was going to change within the WWE, that it was business as usual. Vince was just coming in to work on a sell of the company. Well, what does that say? Just just four days later, what does it say about that when, when everything's changed? Stephanie's gone. That's not business as usual. We don't know the status of Triple H. We'll probably know tomorrow. We don't know if this, if this rumor is true or not. But, but it looks like where there's smoke, there is fire. It looks like every, every wrestling source and media organization is in some form or fashion reporting that this is what's going on. We may not have all the details, but it looks like by tomorrow afternoon, we will know that the WWE is owned by the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund. The country of Saudi Arabia will own the WWE. And this is, I mean, this is insane. We have to look at this. What, what does this actually mean? Is that, does this mean that Vince McMahon has basically forcefully taken back control over his company? We've said this for a long time. There were lots of people, me included, who said Vince was looking for the opportunity to get his foot inside the door so that he could slowly take back over the company. And I thought, you know, he could do it with NBC Universal. I thought he could do it with Fox. I never imagined that it would move this quickly. I never imagined that by tonight we would be talking about possibly waking up in the morning and knowing that Vince McMahon was back 100% in full control of WWE. And that could be creative included at this point. If the Saudi Arabians... By the by, the WWE 
and, and they take it private, they can do anything they want, including putting Vince McMahon back in charge of creative. And I mean, th- this is just insane. You, I don't, you know, I don't know. We won't know the implications of this until tomorrow, but I think right now we just have to, you know, you have to take a second and let this kind of set in. What does this do to the relationships with Fox and NBC Universal? Is, I mean, so when you have an outside entity buy a company and the media rights deals are coming up, how do those companies look at this? What, what, there are so many moving parts to something like this that are going to have to be figured out. And in the next few days, we are going to have to take a deeper dive into each little minute piece of this. But for right now, just looking at this from a broad, just a broad standpoint, we have to, you know, we have to just, what does this mean for television deals? I've read on a couple of, uh, a couple of rumor sites that this could mean wwe going strictly to a streaming only uh service that that you they could create a 100 percent streaming service that included all the back catalog included all future raw and smackdown and premium live events all in one place on the internet you would just subscribe to the wwe service and that would be it there would be no more usa network there would be no more fox network uh showing wwe that it would 100 percent it would be a streaming product. So uh, you got to look at the other implications to this because there are deeper implications to this. What does it, it, let's say the WWE was sold to the Saudi Arabian public investment funds. What does that mean for guys like Sami Zayn who, who have been on record that they, they want nothing to do with, with Saudi Arabia. What does that do for guys like Kevin Owens who, who will stand with Sami Zayn? What does that do for the women's division of the WWE? What, these are all questions that we are going to have to explore if, if this news comes to be true. What happens, what happens moving forward? And this is looking like this is on the fast track. This could be done by tomorrow. We, we could have, by, by the time Friday Night SmackDown rolls around, there could be new owners of the WWE or the plan could be put in place to have new ownership. So what happens to all of these stories that are, that are on track for WrestleMania 39? What happens to WrestleMania 39? There is going to be so much fallout if this happens, if this is actually true, if this, if this is true, there is going to be an extreme amount of fallout from the fans, from the talent, from management. And it, I mean, it looks like it's already started with Stephanie McMahon leaving the company. What happens? Is there a max? Is there going to be a mass exodus of talent? Is there going to be a walkout? Are there going to be people refusing to perform? You know, these are all questions. Like, I don't have answers to this. This episode is me really just posing a ton of questions and being kind of dumbfounded on what is happening and what is going on right now. I mean, this is unprecedented. I can't, like, I did not think that waking up this morning, I was going to, I I got up this morning, started putting stories together. I had four stories to talk about today that had nothing to do with this. And now those stories seem so irrelevant. It doesn't even make sense for me to try to go into any of those stories at this point. I think at this point, we have to talk about these realistic things that can happen in the next 24 to 48 hours. Can there be a mass exodus of talent? I think there could be. I think there will be people refusing to show up for work. What, like I said, what does this mean for the women's division? What does this mean for Sami Zayn? What does this mean for Kevin Owens? What does this mean with all of the stories that were in place headed towards WrestleMania 39? What what was on Vince's mind when he decided to pull the trigger on this? These are all questions that have to be answered. And, and, And I guess another question that we have to ask and another question that has to be answered is, should we believe everything we read on Twitter? Should we believe everything that's reported to be rumor? But I think the problem for me, this has always been my mentality when something like this happens, is that where there is smoke, there is usually fire. When you get more than one person reporting the same thing, when you get all of these credible sources, and we talk shit about the Dave Meltzers, and we talk shit about the Brian Alvarez, and we talk shit uh, uh, about all of these insiders, but the truth is, if they all have the same information and they are all willing to throw out there this same sentiment, it is, it is probably true. We will probably know by the time this, you know, by the time most of you listen to this, if you don't listen to it first thing in the morning, there may have already been something happen. And so 
we have to ask ourselves, are all of these overreactions really necessary? You know, because I've already, I've gone on TikTok, I've gone on Twitter, I've gone on YouTube, and there's already, the, the posting has begun. And there's already so many people overreacting to this. There are people that are alive right now talking about they're completely done. If this goes through, they're done with WWE. But here's the problem. This is the problem, guys. Whenever we overreact to things like this, same thing with Vince McMahon stepping down from the company is the same thing with this with him coming back. The problem is two weeks from now, even if they're bought by Saudi Arabia, it will be back to business as usual. We as consumers are not going to see this. There is not going to be a complete overhaul of the WWE. At least I don't believe that will happen. It will be small minor changes. There will be small things that they have to work out, but it will probably be business as usual. And the white knights, as they always do, will show up to, to you know, talk about how they'll never watch WWE again. They'll all overreact to this. I'm not overreacting to this. I don't know what it means. I think that I'll have questions. I think that in the next, the next three days will be full of, of podcasts about asking questions and taking deeper dives into this information and possibly having other people on the show to talk about it with me. But, but I don't, you know, I'm, I, I'm not done with WWE. And I think it's an overreaction for people to say that they're done with WWE. I, you know, I laugh. There's going to be these people. There's, there's tons of, they're already happening. There's going to be all these people who, who talk about they're done with WWE and that they're going to stop watching, and then two weeks later, they'll still be talking about WWE. That's why you have to be careful with how you react to things and how you overreact to things, and you start throwing around words like, I will, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pull my plug on WWE. I won't watch it anymore. All of that, it can be extremely dangerous. Now, now this is a short episode because that, you know, that's pretty much what I've got for tonight. I don't have a ton to talk about, but I think it's necessary, necessarily necessary for me to at least put out that I'm aware of this, but moving forward, I think the next couple of days are going to be interesting. I think the next couple of uh, uh, the next 24 hours are going to be interesting because we're walking into an unprecedented time in, in, in professional wrestling. We're walking into a, there the, you know, I, I've seen the jokes already. AEW is the number one American wrestling company in the world. That could be true within 24 hours. There could be a mass exodus of, of talent in the next 24 hours. There could be people asking for their releases in the next 24 hours. While, while this show, while I don't, I, you know, nobody, everybody who's making content right now, nobody has real information. And that's why I'm not going to go on for an hour here talking like I know shit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the next three or four days, the next 24 to, to 48 hours are going to be filled with, with answering questions and reaching out to people and trying to get a better understanding of what this actually means for the professional wrestling business. Because I mean, it, it, this is, like I said, unprecedented. I, you know, I, I had planned to come on here and talk about Dominic Mysterio and, and his new prison gimmick. It feels irrelevant right now. I don't, you know, it's just so overshadowed. And then like, as I speak, I, I get Twitter alerts here. You know that that's it, that this is uh, Cassidy Haynes of Body Slam, Body Slam .net talking about he's going to stay up all night reporting on this. Like this is a big deal, and we won't know enough to talk about it until tomorrow. But I wanted to put an episode up today, and I don't think it would have been I don't think it would have made sense for me to do an episode talking about Ronda Rousey and talking about uh talking about Dominic Mysterio. I don't think we can get to that kind of stuff later in the week. Right now, this is. This is the biggest thing in pro wrestling. And in tomorrow's episode, what, once we know more, we'll probably just be a deeper dive into what is happening. I might have Le uh, I might have Lauren on to talk about it. I might have, you know, I might reach out to other content creators to see if they want to come on and talk about it. But this is a big deal. And so I'm going to close out this episode, not in the normal way, not with the normal rigmarole, but just, just knowing that, you know, I wanted to get on here and let everybody know that we will be posting nightly instead of in the daytime. And that, you know, in the next couple of days, expect this to be the, the topic of conversation. If you guys have questions, if you guys want to participate, if you guys want to come on the show and talk about it, anybody who listens to this show, let me know because I, I think it's interesting. I want to hear everybody's take on this. I want to talk. I want to talk to you guys about it. So let me know, you know. Just, just let me know and we'll talk about it. But, but please don't hesitate to reach out and, and, and in the comments of this video, ask questions. 
uh, you know, tell me you want to come on the show. And, uh, and tomorrow we'll jump back on same place, same time tomorrow night. And, and we'll talk more about this, but until then, I, I guess we, we have to ring the final bell. Step in the ring. If you ready, let's go. Hey, hey. Casual wrestling community show. You already know. Talking WWE. Keep it rolling and hosted by Notorious Nerdy D. Hey. Don't be sure that you gon' find. Tune in cause it's online. Hit him with a figure four leg like pie driver or clothesline. We bringing that heat like the show. But you should already